this is CompSci Capers and today I'm going to teach you how to destroy the world by solving a Sudoku puzzle. Yay! So I was wondering the other day about how you might go about writing a piece of software to find a solution to a Sudoku puzzle. So, as with any algorithm, you need to figure out really specific instructions about how you should go about finding the answer. It turns out that the simplest algorithm by far is to just try out all the combinations until you find the answer, but this isn't very sensible. There are just too many combinations. There are several rules you might employ to deduce whether numbers go in the puzzle. For example, sometimes a number has to go in a specific place because there simply isn't another option for it in that particular square. Once you've figured out all of these numbers, you'll have to try some other tactics to figure out the solution. For example, narrowing down where a number might go to two possible squares, or assuming a place for a number and then backtracking if you were wrong. So it's definitely possible to write a computer program that solves a Sudoku that you might find in a newspaper. But what about if we wanted to write an algorithm to solve a Sudoku of any size? Well, that's where we might be able to destroy the world as we know it. Solving a Sudoku of any size is in MP, which definitely doesn't stand for no problem. Being an MP means that if you were to show us a solution to the problem, then it would be relatively easy to check that your solution was correct. Now, not only is Sudoku in MP, it's also been proven to be what's called an MP-complete problem. This means that any MP-complete problem can be reduced or converted to any other problem in MP. So, if anybody were to find a quick solution to an MP-complete problem, this would mean that there would also be a quick solution to all other problems in MP. It's relatively easy for the computer to solve a 9x9 Sudoku, but as the Sudoku gets bigger and bigger, then the computer becomes slower and slower at solving it. Imagine it as a bit like folding a piece of paper. So if you try and fold a piece of paper in half, then it's pretty easy. And the more times that you fold it, it gets harder and harder and harder. The same applies to our Sudoku solver. For really big Sudokus, it would take so long that it would be unusable. Okay, so we're not going to get very far by destroying the world with a folded up stone. So how are we going to use this to destroy the world? Well, the modern world couldn't really work without the internet. We use encryption to make sure that our information is secure and it's really important for everything from government security to making sure that people don't see that embarrassing selfie from several years ago. So, if anybody were to find a quick solution to an NP-complete problem, this would mean that there would also be a quick solution to all other problems in MP. Which is great! We could answer a huge open question in computer science. Is P equal to MP? So here's the win. Most of the really common encryption algorithms, such as RSA, depend on problems in MP that we don't know how to solve quickly. For example, finding the prime factors of really large numbers. The encryption works because it would take hackers an impracticably long time to break the encryption. I mean, we're talking sort of the length of the universe in age in terms of that, rather than just, oh, it's a bit inconvenient, I have to wait a couple of days. Um, and that's what's keeping our information secure. If we could solve an MP complete problem in a quick amount of time, then we could break these algorithms and then we could see all the information, thus destroying the world as we know it. So there we have it, that's how to destroy the world by solving a Sudoku. This has been Compside Capers, come back next time.